Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and also check out the description section below for more information. Also, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a subwoofer to your receiver. Now, there are about three different ways to connect your subwoofer to the receiver. The first way is going to be to use the subwoofer preamp outputs and that's probably going to be the most common method that most people are going to use. So the subwoofer preamp outputs are right here. On this receiver they have two preamp outputs so you can hook up two subwoofers. Anytime that you're connecting equipment always read the owner's manual. If you can't find the owner's manual or you still have questions then contact the manufacturers because Assuming that you know how you can hook it up or in how many ways you can hook it up might not be correct to the way the product is made. Okay, so each product is going to be designed a certain way. All right, so just don't assume that because you might see RCA connectors, you might see speaker line level, speaker wire level inputs and outputs that you could go and just start connecting everything and the receiver is going to, I mean the subwoofer is going to function properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this receiver to this subwoofer. This is the back of the subwoofer. This is an old subwoofer too by the way, very old. And this little satellite speaker here because it's just so convenient and I could show it to you on you know, this one table. Some of the things that you, that you are going to need is going to be speaker wire, if you're going to use the speaker wire input and output connectors, okay? Or you're going to need RCA cables, in particular, one that's made for a subwoofer, and this is like a, this is like a 10 foot, it's like a 10 foot cable right here, okay? So it's just, it's very long, or maybe it's 12 foot, I don't remember exactly how long, but I needed it for a sub, always measure how far your sub is going to be from the receiver, that way you know how large of a cable. So for the easiest method, we're going to go right over here to the back of the receiver, and we're going to go from the subwoofer number one output, because in this situation we're only hooking up one sub, so we're going to put this end of, the, of this very, very, very long RCA cable that I showed you, so it's all one cable. And then we're going to go over here to the receiver, um, excuse me, we're going to go over here to the subwoofer. Now on the subwoofer it has a left, it has a right, and on the left it also says mono, okay? So that's the one that we are going to use for the subwoofer, the low frequency effects output. This is the point 0.1 channel on the receiver, if you're doing point 0.2, for two subs, then you'd be hooking up the second sub, okay? Now, it's very simple, we, we just do that, we plug it in. And this is the rear of another subwoofer. Just to give you an idea, this one's much more basic. This only has the line level in, left and right, or the mono, which is the left LFE. So that's all this one has. I didn't feel like unhooking this, so I'm using a flashlight to kind of light it up. And you can see it has the low pass crossover, and it has the volume knob, the gain knob, that's called here. And you're on, your auto, and your off switch, and also has your phase, your 0, 180. Again, you know, you flip that and listen to music to see which way uh, the sub sounds louder with all your speakers connected. The next step is going to be to go to the receiver's menu, or that should have been a step that you did previously, and make sure that the subwoofer is turned on on the receiver menu settings. Okay? Once this is connected, you're done. Now, in the olden days of things, Sometimes hooking it up from your receiver to your subwoofer 
even with turning up the volume on the preamp output for the sub using the level controls on the receiver, it's still too low. Then what you do is you would purchase a Y jack like this. So it's an RCA in and it's got these two connectors like this. So what we're doing now is we're going to connect this here like this and like this and this used to be something that they recommended and then we connect this here. So that right there should give you a boost in the amount of volume, okay? Because you really don't want to be turning up the sub 100%. I personally recommend no more than 60% on the uh, volume knob controls that's on the sub. With this sub, the volume knob controls are on the front. Most of them are on the rear. I'm gonna show you the backs of some other subs as well, so just try to stay with me. Now, connecting it like this might also alter the sound a bit, okay? It might change the sound a tiny bit. Maybe the sound might not be quite as clean. Um, you know, I don't know. Kind of just speculating on that a bit. Or maybe it might, you know, change something with voltage or whatever a little bit. I don't know. But that used to be the method years and years ago. And I did use it many times and I had uh, subwoofers hooked up for many, many years and years and years like that and had no issues and the volume was just better and I could actually use the sub. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unhook this cable and let's see. Now the next method is going to be using preamp outputs, okay? So what you want to do with preamp outputs is, again, you're going to be using the same type of cable, but you're going to you're going to connect it. I'm in a. I just created a total knot with this, and I don't know how I did it. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to look for your preamp outputs. Now on this receiver, it only has a zone two left and right speaker, left and right channel preamp output. On other receivers. It will have preamp outputs for your front left, your front right, your center channel. It's going to have your height channels, your surround left, your surround right, your surround backs. All that stuff is each of them is going to have their own preamp outputs. I am going to show you the backs of other receivers that have that just so you have a better idea of what I was talking about. This section over here, this is where the preamp outputs are on the back of this receiver. Okay, and these preamp outputs you could use to hook up a external amp or to connect a subwoofer to any of your speakers. So for example, if you want to connect a subwoofer to your surrounds, you could come over here and just connect a subwoofer to these preamp outputs. If you want to connect to the center channel, the front left, front right, whatever you want, it's all right in there. Now in this case, what we would do is we would go over here to the, let's say we're going to hook it up to the right speaker, right? Or maybe you want to do left and right because this has a left and this has a right. So we're going to go from the right into the right, okay? And that's it. Now what we would do is come over here and go to the left, from the left into the left, okay? If this sub was only going to be used for the right, then we would just leave it alone or possibly we would connect it to the left mono. So you would have to test that out just to see which one sounds louder, which one sounds better. And because this is the left mono and it's going from the right, it would just be mono. In this case, this is probably set up more for like a stereo connection left and right. Again, always contact the manufacturer to find out the best way to wire these things. This is just a very general guide because connecting a subwoofer can be very confusing. So now that we've done that, that's the second way to connect a subwoofer. The third way is going to be using speaker wires. Now before I talk about speaker wires, on the back of a subwoofer it has something called a phasing. Okay, So over here, this says normal and reverse and there's a switch. Right now I have it on reverse, but it has normal as well. Listen to your subwoofer playing music 
and just come over here and flip it and then listen to it again and then flip it whichever one sounds louder and sounds like it blends well that's the correct choice I'm using a flashlight on the back of the subwoofer because it's kind of in a dark location and I don't feel like unwiring it you can see the power it has a standby and auto you can see the phase switch the zero degrees and the 180 and that's the switch that I said that you need to flip and listen to see which way is louder when you're playing music volume knob you got your low pass crossover right there so there's your low pass crossover and over here you got your speaker jacks you got your LFE you got your line in so there's your right and left and here's your LFE subwoofer input and that's just pretty much the rear of this particular subwoofer it has some nice options now this also has an auto standby over here so this is going to turn the power on and off when it detects a signal so in the case of this subwoofer, it has off, it has low, and it has high, okay? This subwoofer has more ways to connect than a lot of other subwoofers too. And there are many subwoofers on the market that have just been reduced down to like a left and right input or just maybe an LFE input. So really, you know, take a look at the back of the subwoofer before you purchase it to make sure that it's the right subwoofer for you. Many subwoofers don't even have this anymore, and I, and I love hooking up subwoofers this way. I think it's fantastic, especially for, for the front channel in order to keep the front speakers on the receiver set to large. Okay, so now for the little bit more complicated method, and that's to use speaker wire. Now I have this kind of short piece of speaker wire that I've had laying around, and I really can't do too much with it, so I'm going to use it to show you how to connect it. But I'm actually going to use a different speaker wire as well. But I first wanted to show you, let me get this, let me get this little antenna off here so it's out of the way. I first want to show you and talk to you about how to strip the wires. Get yourself a wire stripper, something like this. And on this wire stripper, you can see the size wire at the top. So a 20 gauge is a very very small hole. I hope my finger's not in the way. Very small hole is 20 gauge. 18 gauge is a little bit larger. 16 gauge is a little bit larger. 14 gauge and then 12 gauge. Okay. On this wire stripper, it also shows you for stranded wire, which is most speaker wire, it's stranded, or solid wire. So for stranded wire, we're going to be reading the numbers over here. If you were using solid, it would be over here, but you're probably going to be using stranded. Also, it's a great idea to use wire that is solid copper. So even if it's stranded wire, just make sure it's solid copper, not copper clad aluminum, because aluminum does not conduct as well as copper. So it's basically a mix of a lot of aluminum wire and a little bit of copper wire, uh, you know, typically on top. So just keep that in mind. Try to purchase wire that is solid copper. Okay, so now to, sh to strip the wire and to get the wire ready. A white paper plate is a great idea, okay? It's a great idea because what you're doing is you're keeping the, the strands of wire that are going to fall off from getting caught in your carpeting on the floor, ending up you know, stuck into your feet or something later on down the road. So you're keeping the floor clean, but you're also able to see how many strands you've lost. Okay, so you're also able to, to see how many strands you've lost, and that's very important because when you're stripping the wire, if in the stripping process, you know, you've lost 20% of these wires, that's no good. So first, we're going to use the inner part over here, which is just mostly for cutting. So you can see you come over here and just, you could snip it right off, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here like this and... Just trying to see if I'm lined up right in the camera. We're just going to cut the middle a little bit, right down the center where there's this divider. Because on this wire, there's a big positive and there's a big negative. So maybe that'll show on camera. I don't know if it'll get that type of focus. But you can see that. Maybe you can't. 
So just take my word for it, every wire is going to say positive and negative. So now that we've split it, we could just take our fingers and see, we could pull it apart into two separate wires and this is what we want. We want two separate wires. Uh, maybe you don't need to pull it back this far. I'm pulling it back this far to show you and just to make it a little bit more obvious. Now, typically on the speaker wire, it says somewhere, if it's a decent speaker wire, what gauge wire it is. And don't, don't purchase 18 gauge wire and typically stay away from 16 gauge wire as well. Look at 14 gauge, 12 gauge even better, it's thicker. But if you're, if you're wiring and you're going to be like under 25 feet or so in length, 14 should be all right. Uh, you know, if you're going to be going more than that, then go with 12. I tend to use a combination of 12 and 14. It, sometimes it depends on the price, but you know, for the, for the additional money over a, a, a thin wire like, you know, 16 gauge, the 14 gauge is well worth it because the whole idea is to get the best sound quality out of your system. Okay, if your receiver is struggling to send the signal, then you know what's the point in spending all this money if an extra you know ten, fifteen, or twenty dollars for all the wiring is is causing you to have a poor um, signal? And you know back to the um, you know back to the copper clad aluminum, that wire is cheaper and it's cheaper because most of it is aluminum. So that's uh, you know another reason to stay away from it. So with this wire, let's just say we don't know, you know, we don't know what gauge wire this is. Okay, I don't, I don't see it anywhere on the wire. It just says who manufactured it. It doesn't say anywhere what gauge. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom with the largest hole. We're going to start with the 12 gauge. So we're going to start with the 12 gauge hole and see if it strips. So we're going to squeeze down gently. Okay, we're going to squeeze down gently. And then I'm just going to take my thumb. I'm going to use my thumb because I'm using my thumb here to push. Okay, so then I just kind of push. See, now it's not, it's not cut through. So we come over here. It's, it's somewhat cut through, but it's not cut through all the way. So this wire is not 12 gauge. So let's just snip this off because it's useless. Now we're going to go to 14. We're going to go up. So it's a little bit smaller. We're going to put it through. We're going to put it through. We're going to squeeze. And let me get this out of the way. Again, I'm taking my thumb to push while I'm pushing this way with my arm. So we're doing this. And then once you get it a little bit, kind of ease up a little bit. So I, I, I kind of, I'm opening it up a tiny bit. Okay. Now what happened here is exactly why I want the plate. We lost some wire and we actually lost way too much wire when I stripped that. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to cut it again. Now that we know it's 14, it seems like it's thicker than 14. It seems like it's thicker than 14 but it's smaller than 12. So let's put this in here and I'm not going to squeeze down all the way this time. I'm going to squeeze down just a little bit and get a feel of it and now pull it. Now look. Perfect. There's no wire in here. Okay. So we didn't lose any wire with that strip. So with this, you don't always have to squeeze down all the way. Okay. As you saw, when I squeeze down all the way, you know, and we stripped that one. I mean, look how much wire was left behind. So this is no good. So let's do that one more time. I'm going to come over here and I'm going now to the 14 gauge because we learned that it's a little bit bigger. That it seems to be a little bit thicker than 14, but it's smaller than 12. Okay. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to squeeze down and I'm going to squeeze down. Now, not all the way. See, I'm kind of feeling it. And now I'm going to grab this and pull. So there we go. That worked out well as well. Now it looks like I got a couple here, but not too bad. See? It looks like there's maybe five thin strands. Again, you know, you could come over here and it's a lot easier when you just do it yourself. You know, first get a feel of the speaker wire. Okay, get a feel of the speaker wire. Do some testing with it. Cut quite a few pieces until you feel confident. You know, come over here, cut it, 
you know, don't be, don't be afraid. Squeeze down just a little bit like that time. You see, even less, no wires at all. Okay, so that was a good one. You know, get a feel of it. I'm gonna do it again. Come over here. I think I have a pretty good feel of the wire. Squeeze down just a little bit. Oh, that was a little too little. That one didn't work, see? So you just kinda gotta get a, you kinda gotta get a feel of it. I'm gonna squeeze down again. And that was perfect. You could see, there's no wire. We got all our wire here. And then when you when you go like this, because you gotta spin it, you gotta twist it. Okay. So and then you're pulling it, there's no wire, you know, we have all our wire on a paper plate, so we're good. So now, because I need the wire to be even, I don't wanna I don't wanna work with that. So I'm going to let's say uh, do this. I'm gonna restrict this piece. Let's see what happens. That one, I only got a, got a few little in there, good enough for now, twisting it up. Okay. Wire's a little sticky too, it's actually really old wire that I've had laying around. I mean, this, this wire has probably been laying around for like 15 years, <laughs> and I'm not even kidding when I say that. So it does, it does, feel, it does feel strange, because it does feel kind of um, uh, a little bit sticky, I guess maybe just from years of sitting around. Anyway, let me get my plate out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a different wire now to actually wire it up because this one, I actually, I actually cut this, so I don't wanna cut this anymore because I'm actually using these two wires for, and you can see it's just, it's one piece of wire. So this is all just one big piece of wire, but the reason why we're gonna use this is because it's so much easier when you have the black and the red, because everything is gonna match up very well, can't get confused. I highly suggest using a wire like this, and it's nice having this white outer jacket that you can, you know, you could just, you split, you split the wire, and you'll typically use your cutter in the middle and just kind of come down here and just kind of snip the wire jacket. I could pull it apart if I pick at it more, but I don't want to, because again, I do want to use this to hook up some speakers. Okay, so you got your wire, your wire is twisted. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna figure out which speakers you're gonna be connecting this to. So let's just say we're gonna to go to our front right. So we're gonna go over here to the receiver and we're gonna unscrew, we're gonna unscrew the part that we're going to connect it to. So what we wanna do is we wanna connect it, but we wanna connect it so that it's being screwed in the way we're gonna tighten. So, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay, so follow my thumb. See my thumb is going to the right and going this way and this way. So this is to tighten it. So we want the wire to go in this direction. Okay, because we don't wanna go in, we wouldn't wanna put the wire in down below over here because as we tighten, as it tightens, it's going to push the wire out. We don't want to push the wire out. We want the wire to go inward, okay? If it's pushing it out, it's gonna crunch the wire, it's gonna splinter the wire and smush itself. Okay, so when you're looking in here, and I'm hoping that it shows well, there's a little, I'm gonna try to unscrew this a little more. So there's a little, you can see in the middle, there's a little like, looks like a little screw in there, and that's what's threading in this red, connector. So what we want to do is because we want to keep it so that it's turning in to the right, we're going to go on the right. Let me kind of tighten this up. All right, so because we want to go in the direction that the receiver is being tightened, we're going to go into the right side of this. So you see I'm, I'm to the right of the that screw thread thing in the middle. Okay. Hopefully this is showing well. So now, when I tighten this, I'm gonna hold this here and put this back on the tripod. Okay, so the wire is still in the same place. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to tighten it. What you never wanna do is you don't wanna be tightening in the, the insulation. 
Okay, so make sure that the insulation is not inside of the part that you tighten up. Okay, so that's kind of what it's going to look like. Okay, so right now, see if I could bring this back over. This is how you want it to look. You see how the insulation is just on the outside? It's not tightened up on the inside? Okay, because if you're tightening on the insulation, the insulation is thicker than the wire, so it might not, it might not make contact well. And it also, It also might very easily fall out, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so that's connected well. Now we have to connect the negative. And of course, make sure your power is off when you're doing this. So we're gonna connect the negative. Now we have the positive and negative is both connected to the back of the receiver. So the red is the positive, the black is the negative. You always wanna make sure that you do the same for each speaker. So make sure each speaker has your, your positive wire is your red and for each speaker, your negative wire is your black. So again, this is the right. This is the left. This is your center channel. Here's your surround channel, surround right, surround left. Height channel one right, height channel one left, surround back right, surround back left. It's very important, very important to make sure everything is, is, is um, very important to make sure everything's matched up evenly. So we're gonna go from the right front into the right input of the subwoofer. So in this case, the input is right here. So this is your right. See the R plus minus? R plus minus is also under there. That's where we're gonna to connect to. So I'm gonna put the red, I'm gonna push down and pop it in. Now these type of, uh, this, this, um, all right, so now these type of connectors are not really made for wire this thick, um, but I'm using it anyway. This is like the, these are the cheap type of connectors. I never liked this subwoofer to be honest. <laughs> never liked it so just for the sake of it I mean it's in there it's not how I would like it to look but it's in there just so you could see it so here again is the the big speaker wire it's all connected the next thing that we would do is we would do the same thing by connecting the front left and right into the input left negative left positive okay but for the sake of this video, we're not going to do that because there's no need. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the speaker. Okay, because we're using the, the speaker level. So we're going to go here, and this is the output. So this is the right output. And this is the left output I mean excuse me this is the negative output okay so now we have a whole separate wire here that's going to run to it says output to speaker so that's very important make sure that you output it to the speaker so this little speaker this is a satellite speaker but it's nice to use because it's just so convenient especially to have it on camera over here it's going to make it very very easy so we're going to go from our output and follow on this long wire okay, here's the end of the long wire so we're going to be doing the same thing that we did with the receiver to connect it to the speaker so again a lot of subwoofers have the exact same type of connectors as you, you see on this receiver 
in the back of the sub. So with this, it's pretty simple. There's a hole that we just got to put it into. Now this, I, I'll admit, when they designed this, they made this a little bit crazy. It's a little bit hard to get, a little bit hard to get it into, but what I'm going to do is unscrew it as much as I can, each one, and maybe or maybe not, you could see the holes in there. So we're literally just going to, you know, I could rest this safely like this. We're going to just find the hole and put it right in. There we go. And of course, you don't want the speaker wire to uh, the speak. Excuse me, you don't want the speaker wire insulation to be screwed down upon. So make sure you don't screw down upon the. the insulation. Okay. And there, the speakers are all connected. Okay, so just to show you, here's a speaker wire, the massive speaker wire that we have, and here's the speaker. Okay. Now that this speaker is connected, this is the same way that you would wire any speaker in line using the speaker wire or speaker level outputs from your receiver to a subwoofer that has this ability to the speaker. Okay, next step. Now that we have this connected, on the receiver, we would be setting the receiver to large because we don't want to set the receiver to small for this because these speakers have their own sub, right? And subs are used so that you can achieve the lowest bass in your system. What we do have to do, and many receivers, many receivers have this on the rear and I'm going to show you the rear of some other subwoofers. So here's the volume, like I mentioned, here's your volume. Now here's your high cut. So what this is doing is, this is stopping frequencies from going into this speaker, okay? So it's gonna filter them out. So on the low end, this could filter out 50 hertz, okay? The low end is 50 hertz. So somewhere halfway, right in the middle, that would be 100 hertz as high as it can go is 150. So at the very, at the very most the sub will allow is 150 hertz and up to go to the speaker. Okay, so that's your crossover point. So let's just say a speaker like this, it's kind of small. Maybe we want to set it to 100 hertz. 100 hertz is probably too, too low for this. So we probably would be maybe 125 hertz, maybe around there, maybe 150 hertz over there. Let's just say this speaker wasn't this speaker. Let's say this little satellite speaker was a large tower speaker. So you probably would then be somewhere 100 hertz, maybe 75 hertz, maybe 50 hertz. So let's just say if the speaker has two 8-inch woofers, you probably would stick it at 50 hertz. Okay, and then that would be a crossover point. Here's your, here's your on off, your standby on. Um, this is a setting for movies or music. You would press this with this particular sub and it would change the output of the sub. This sub was only good, in my opinion, for music. It was horrible for movies because any type of strong bass and it would just distort. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible for, for that. So, uh, but it, you know, it was, it was okay for, for music. Not, I wouldn't say that the bass was great for music. It wasn't like tight, clean bass, but I mean, it was a cheap subwoofer at the time. And when I bought it, uh, you know, I was, I was tight for money and it was the best choice. And I mean, it kind of served its purpose a little bit, not really, but a little bit. <laughs> and that's the three ways to connect your receiver to your subwoofer and your subwoofer to a speaker, all right? The other way that you could connect this would be to connect this right directly to this speaker and then connect this sub using the subwoofer cable that we had, which was this. 
this sub would have been connected to the subwoofer preamp output and then on the receiver the receiver would then be set to small so this front left and front right speaker would be set to small and the crossover that you would use would be the crossover that's inside of the receiver for example you know setting it to 150 hertz or 200 hertz inside the receiver but then you'd come over here and you would turn this high cut all the way up to 150 and let the receiver do the filtering and not filter here and then of course you'd want to set the volume regardless of how it's connected the volume on this has to be set um, because you know this this is the volume that's built into the subwoofer which controls the volume on the amplifier that's in here and you know again typically in my experience 60% Maybe on some sub subwoofers you get away with 65, 70%, but otherwise, if it's a good subwoofer, you should probably be around 50% or maybe only like, I don't know, 30%, 35% up on the volume knob. So depending on you know the wattage of the subwoofer, how, how good it is. That's just been my experience. If you could set it to 50% or less, I find that you know subs sound great that way because even the most demanding of movies it's not going to cause distortion and you never want to hear like a pow, 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 coming from it like a pow, like the woofer is just going crazy bottoming out so just keep that in mind and I hope that you found this video helpful